Pastor, Pastor Moses. This is your time, my pastor. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Elder Abel. And thank you for the prayer. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is indeed a special and a blessing, a special privilege and a blessing to be part of this special um, virtual prayer ministry. And I truly have been blessed to be part of this family throughout uh, this week. And we are continuing with experiences with the shepherd um, this morning. We are uh, continuing with the experiences with the shepherd. About 3000 years ago, David wrote one poem that should help us deal with the troubles of life today. Only 118 words, if you count from the King James Version. And I dare say, these are the most familiar words of all the Psalms that have been canonized. Reading this Psalm will kindle a ray of hope to the hopeless, will bring healing to the hurting, will guarantee help for the helpless, encouragement for the discouraged, and will provide strength for those who are weak. For purposes of this morning's devotion, allow me to get to verse five. And intentionally today, I am dealing with verse five, part one, so that tomorrow we'll then deal with verse five, part two. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Verse 5 introduces one of the most delightful and enjoyable scenes in the entire Bible. God the shepherd, God the comforter, becomes God the host. To me, it gives me glimpses of what we find in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9, the text that gives us the wedding supper of the Lamb. The Bible says, then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The description of this banquet is so imaginative and brilliant that one has the impression of being present and smelling the heavenly flavors. And you know, when God serves, there is abundance of everything. Indeed, the cup overflows. In our study, so far from verse one to verse four, we have met two main characters, sheep and the shepherd. Today, a third character is introduced in the picture, the enemy, the enemy. Scholars are not very sure when exactly David wrote this 23rd Psalm. Others have suggested that it could have been after he had faced Goliath in the Valley of Elah. Others still have suggested that it could have been while he was on the run from King Saul, hiding in the dry Judean forests of Hereth. Others also have suggested that perhaps he wrote it when he was old, an old man, approaching the end of his years. And as he was looking back, he writes the 23rd Psalm. But one thing that he writes and indicates to us this morning 
is that the shepherd does not just deal with our frailties and our failures. The shepherd also deals with our falls. This morning, allow me to just share one point, one devotional thought as part A of verse five. And I am saying the shepherd deals with all our enemies. That's all I will say this morning, that the shepherd deals with all our enemies. I am saying, my brother, my sister, to you this morning, that the shepherd deals with all our enemies. The shepherd will deal with all your enemies. In Luke chapter 6, verse 27. Jesus says to us, I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. I've always asked the question, have you ever wondered why Jesus said, love your enemies and not do not have enemies? He was speaking to his disciples and his followers. And he says to them, I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Why did Jesus say, love your enemies to this group of followers, his disciples, and not my disciples do not have enemies? Well, the truth and the reality of life, my brothers and sisters, is that no matter how good you are, in this life, if you just live long enough, people will mistreat you, people will annoy you, people will hate you, people will hurt you, people will be jealous of you, people will disappoint you, people will intentionally disadvantage you, people will distress you, people will manipulate you and position themselves as your enemies. This morning I am saying the shepherd will deal with all our enemies. Listen to Matthew chapter five, verse 44. The Lord says to us, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Proverbs 25, verse 21. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. Make sure that no one repays evil for evil. Always pursue what is good for one another and for all people. Proverbs 24, verse 17. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and let your heart be glad when he stumbles. My brothers and sisters, the scriptures are consistent. Love your enemies. In other words, the issue of the enemy is not your business. Yours is to owe no one anything save love. So listen to what God then says in the scriptures. Exodus chapter 23 Verse 22, but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary, thus saith the Lord. 
the shepherd deals with all our enemies. Psalms 138 verse seven. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the anger of my enemies and your right hand will save me. I am saying this to you, my brother, to you, my sister, this morning. The shepherd deals with all our enemies. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. The shepherd deals with all our enemies. Psalms 37, verse 1 and 2. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. I am saying this this morning. The shepherd deals with all our enemies. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. The Lord says, vengeance is mine. Their foot shall sleep in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things to come hasten upon them. I am saying, my brothers and sisters, the shepherd deals with all our enemies. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. This morning, I am saying one thing. The shepherd deals with all our enemies. You see, after the green pasture experience, after having been touched by the shadow of death, God has another surprise for those who have made a decision to walk in the paths of righteousness. God organizes a big banquet. He is the wedding planner and he invites all his friends to this great supper and banquet and God himself serves at the table. And all the enemies suffering, pain, Hatred, war, COVID-19, tortures, injustice, racism, tribalism, death, and most of all, sin and Satan are going to be crushed and trampled over. The presence of the defeated enemies watching over us as we feast on the table, speaks to me of fullness of happiness, fullness of joy that will be so great that the human heart will at last be at perfect peace with God. God, my brothers and sisters, the shepherd deals with all our enemies. Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Yes, beloved, the shepherd deals with all our enemies. Shall we pray? Gracious, kind, and loving Father, thank you this morning for this particular word. Thank you for speaking to us ever so clearly because many of us are challenged left, right, and center by the various foes and enemies that seem to want to destroy us, to discourage us, to attack us, to cause us to fall and leave the righteous path. And thank you so much, oh God, for making it so clear that the issue of our enemies is not our business. And this morning we surrender all our enemies into your hands, oh God. 
For we now know that the shepherd deals with all our enemies. Bless us now as we get and transition into our prayer rooms. In Jesus' name we pray for a special blessing of the day. Amen. Amen. Amen.